This mailbag is also divided into two parts. The today's selection is nostalgic and even a little spectacular. Part 2 will air next Thursday. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. This is a new mailbag. Recently I read this book here about the famous inventor Tesla. And this is why I thought I want to do some experiments similar to what he did and I bought a Tesla coil. A really nice looking Tesla coil. Blue here and some electronics. It came with a power supply with the usual American plug and a crappy travel adapter. But we will solve this problem. Here we have something interesting. This is, I think, for sound. It even came with a manual instructions for the use of this Tesla coil. Now let's check it. By the way, this became now Swiss. Usually it does not take only a few minutes. You have at least to live 10 years in Switzerland to get Swiss, but this one was a little bit faster. Switch it on. Hopefully nothing will explode. The, this is not Electro Boom. This is a different channel. Oh, nice. I hear a sound. I do not want to go too close because maybe it would then destroy my camera and I don't like this. So this Tesla coil definitely works. Now Mr. Tesla was very famous for his performances on stage. And as an old ham operator, of course, I know some tricks with high voltage. We have to switch off all light here and change the camera position. Now let's switch on the Tesla coil and now the magic. You see here, there is no connection. Just my hand here. Magic white gloves. On a distance of at least 20 centimeters, it works. And now a little bit of music. I connected the plug to the Tesla coil. Tesla coil is switched off. And now I start some copyright free music. And you hear it from the smartphone. Of course, I did not take my iPhone. I took my old Android and now I plug in the connector here. I don't hear anything. And now I switch on the Tesla coil. Maybe you switch off the light. And if you don't believe me, Silence. Now a little bit light show. By the way, it smells a little bit in uh, my lab, and I just want to check my CO2 and my TOVC sensors if they reacted to this experiments. You see here all my sensors on the ESP32 CO2 sensors, TOVC sensors. And here you see the CC800 
and 11 reacted. The last half hour or so, it increased the value when I did my experiments. The CO2 sensors stood at the same place, so there is no additional CO2. I think it's ozone or something else which was created here during these experiments. I have to say it's not a cheap product, but the build quality is very nice. It even has a fan here on the lower side here to cool the whole thing. So far it's not really hot. It's quite simple here. We have the primary coil with just a few windings. And here we have the secondary coil with plenty of windings which produces this high voltage. So I feel now a little bit like Mr. Tesla long, long time ago. And since we are in the past, this is a book I bought of Amazon about the 8080 and the 8085. And it was printed in 1981. And it contains a little bit assembler code and a little bit binary arithmetics and stuff like that. And I got also a few nice PCBs for the project and also some large IC sockets for the CPU and for the different other chips here. Stuff for one of the next videos. Here is the listing of the Tesla coil. It costs $37 and you get it in two different versions obviously, a golden one and a blue one. I chose the blue one. And you see here, you could even do other stuff. I did not do it today. The next one was bought with a hope. The hope that the Raspberry Pi 4 will be able to boot from USB. It is a small SSD from Kingspec. It's a Chinese one and it would fit perfectly to a Raspberry Pi 4. The size would match perfectly either here or also here. Now whether this SSD has some wear, wear problems, I do not know, but I assume they buy also the chips, all the others buy, so I assume that they have some wear leveling here. Crystal Mark shows these numbers which are okay, I think, on a USB 3 a connection for a Raspberry Pi. I did not do the test on the Raspberry Pi itself. I did it on Windows. By the way, it is the smallest, if I remember right. It has 128 gigabyte, which is more than enough. And here is the listing. As I mentioned, I took the smallest one. And no, not the one with the <laughs> trees or whatever, Christmas trees, I think. I took this one and it was $25. For my home server, this would be a perfect match because uh, there I still fear a little bit that the SD card will wear out after a certain time because I do quite a lot of logging of uh, several data. As you might know if you watched all my other Raspberry Pi videos. The next one is also for a Raspberry Pi. And it is a 4G modem for USB. The idea is that I can build a LoRa gateway without any connection to Ethernet, just somewhere in the wilderness with a 4G connection and a power bank or maybe even with solar. And I want to try this out and I hope I can make a video because some of the viewers asked me whether this is possible to have a LoRa gateway in a remote location. I already tried it. It needs a SIM card for data and uh, so far it worked here in Switzerland. But you have to pay attention that you get the right one for your country because not all countries have exactly the same frequencies and modulation on 4G. Especially I think the United States have different systems even with different carriers. The next one is also for a Raspberry Pi. And this was sent to me 
by the manufacturer because I was searching for some alternatives to the third case. Then I got some tips from my viewers concerning different aluminium cases with similar concepts than the Flerk. And this one here is also one of those. Now this is a really cool case. It is aluminium like the Flerk case, but it has lots of additional things I never saw. And this is why I absolutely wanted to show it to you. For example, with a magnetic holder here, we can access all GPIO pins of the Raspberry. And also they are named here with nicely readable characters, even for an old guy like me. And you will now be very surprised. Look at these nice colored pins here. No Raspberry in it. Because these are not the pins of the Raspberry Pi. And if you see, the Raspberry Pi lies completely different. And here we have also a fan, which is additional to what I saw. Maybe necessary, but maybe not. It also has these two metal coolers, which transfer the heat to the, to the case. Very simple and a very good concept. It runs since weeks on my Raspberry Pi lab server without any problems. But this is not all. If you look at the normal Raspberry Pi 4, we have here the USB plus the Ethernet connector. And here we have HDMI and power and sound. Not very convenient if you want it, for example, as a media server somewhere close to your TV or on your desk in your office. And this is why they built this one here. It is connected like that to the Raspberry Pi. And now you see, oh ho, all connections on the same line. And if you look here, I do not want to disassemble it for the moment. You have even more. You have the power connector, USB C connector here. And maybe you didn't recognize it, but it's a button power. And this is something I never saw. This power button is really cool because it comes with a software and this has the function to turn it on, to soft shutdown, or to reboot, or to have a forced shutdown. So this is more or less the button I showed you once on GPIO 3, now built in here, and the software together with it, which also makes it possible to steer this fan on several speed levels. This is everything I made available in my videos and even more with this small PCB. This is really a nice thing. So the whole thing is like that. If you don't need the uh, IO pins like that, and you even can go out with few wires here. It's a little bit bigger than this one, but a very nice looking case with lots of added value here. This is the listing and the price is $25. The only thing I do not like is you do not get it on the usual platforms like AliExpress or Amazon, at least not for the moment. You have to buy it at their shop at argon40.com. If the shipping is not too expensive, this is really nearly the same price as a Flerk case and the added value is a lot compared to the Flerk case. This is the end of part one. Maybe you join for part two with an interesting power supply. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.